Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we will be looking at yeast drying. Over the years I've been contributing and reading various brewing forums and yeast drying is something that comes up ever so often and the usual response that a lot of people have is no you cannot do that at home it's just not sanitary enough. And yet the same people believe that it, we are sanitary enough to do top cropping, bottom cropping, yeast washing and so on doesn't really make an awful lot of sense to me. And this is heightened further when I found out that in Norway they've actually been drying yeast for hundreds and hundreds of years. The old style method would be to use one of these. This is what we call a yeast log and you will find these in various museums around Norway. The yeast was simply smeared into these logs and then they hung them up in a dry area to dry. Simple as that. Here's an example of a modern day version. These are known as yeast rings. Just like the yeast logs, these are made out of wood and you simply smear the yeast onto it. And here's one with the yeast actually on it, just to give you an idea. Okay, so let's have a look at the processes that allow you to dry your own yeast. We start off by top cropping the yeast. This is a very simple process. You simply skim the top the yeast is then collected in a sanitary jar. You then add pre-boiled but cooled water to this and stick it in the fridge. Let it settle down for a bit and then you can start drying it if you wish. After a bit of time this is what you'll have. So you can see the yeast has settled at the bottom. There's no sediment or anything like that in this so it's just pure yeast. So equipment wise this is what I'm going to use. I've got myself a big storage box and I've got a smaller one that you can see there in the back. I've got a sieve which is a very fine version of a sieve and I've also got a container that you can see just here. So the next thing to do is to give this jar a good shake and the idea being we want to take all of the yeast off the bottom and have it in the water. After that we simply pour this onto the sieve itself with the container underneath. Naturally then our yeast will be at the top of the sieve. This is then added to our box, mostly to keep my cats out to be quite honest. And it's left like this for three to five hours just to allow the rest of the moisture content to come through. After that it's then smeared onto baking paper. This is then wrapped up and added to our smaller box. Just a quick note on these boxes, the lids are not fastened shut. It's important to have a little bit of air going into these because this is what helps the drying process the most. This is now left now for some days until it's dry and then collected up. Other methods for doing this include using a mash bag like this to siphon through the water content of the yeast before you dry it. Some people actually smear the yeast onto a baking tray and then actually dry the yeast in an oven. I haven't done this, you do need an oven with a fan. This is left overnight in an oven on a moderate heat and I'm told this is a very effective method. So here's the yeast that I actually dried naturally in a normal room. You can see that this has dried out nicely. This was then added to a vial for safekeeping. I actually dried out three different yeasts here. In this dry form this yeast can actually be frozen and is said to last for at least a decade afterwards. So plenty there for the future. So there you go, you can see that yeast drying isn't complicated, it's easy. One thing I must mention though which is of vital importance is that everything that I did here was squeaky clean and sanitary. And that of course is totally vital in handling yeast. So I hope you found this video very useful and interesting. Why not try this method out? 
in your next brew. It's simple, it's easy, and hey, it's fun and saves you money too. You can't beat that. So if you did like this video, then please do go ahead and like it on YouTube. This really helps me out and allows the videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. I've got a lot of videos in the pipeline for the future, so if you're interested in uh, seeing what I've got coming up, then please subscribe for future content. If you have any questions on anything that I've covered in this video or in others, or anything to do with brewing in general, then please do not hesitate to get in touch. I'm more than happy to help. Until then, happy brewing!